Let's open the Word of God. Remember, it is that the light of God's countenance is to be seen upon us. Let us uh, open to the Word of God. Let us open to um, Galatians 2.20. I'm going to read from Galatians 2.20 and 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, the 7th through the 12th verse. I'm asking you to pray for me. Also, I'm so weary and my mind's worn out. So many things are going on. And I changed my job yesterday from a parcel postman to a letter carrier. And I... Uh, it's been about 20 years since I stood up and boxed up mail, and also because I took it out, my legs are kind of wobbly. I'm getting old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was really, I had to, to just come home yesterday and lay down. <laughs> Amen. Uh, they were throbbing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Brother Ben knows all about it. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you can't make that third um, landing going upstairs. Uh, but nevertheless, um, Sometimes you think, you know, I've been, been thinking, Lord, is this the year that I could um, maybe uh, retire some way or something? Even in my mind, I think, well, maybe I'd break an arm or something. And then, uh, uh, because go out on, on, on compensation or something, see? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, get a medical, because uh, of retirement or something like that, you know, just so I can serve God more, you know? But that's never the way you think it is, see? And I was just trying to, I've been figuring out the last two or three years how I could retire because I'm so tired and weary and have more time for the Lord, more time to pray and, and, and read the word and, and hear the tapes and, and serve God's people. But it's just I have to go on working, you know. And so uh, then I'm thinking, that will this be the year? This is, this is surely the year, 1967, 68, 69, 70. 71 is the year. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit moves in about a month ago. And this route comes up and tells me to take this first class route. So I'm going from one job to another job. So <laughs> praise, but that's God's will. I'm happy to walk in the will of God. But I, I thought I liked the route, Route 18, up on top of a hill where I'm to, I have about 11 houses now which I have to deliver mail to. But in about a month or so, it should be cut down to only three houses. <laughs> praise God. So up on top of, a, of Fort George Hill. I think it's one of the highest points in Manhattan, in the city. Praise God. So we don't understand these things, but we just keep walking. That's all. I thought maybe I could retire, and meanwhile I have to go and deliver mail. But it's wonderful to know that in about a month or so, after about a month's trial, because you have about a 30-day trial for a route, I can rest in three houses. For the, the timekeeper asked me, he says, what are you going to do with all the time on your hands? when you get to know the route. I said, don't worry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I have a whole lot to do with it. Amen. But right now it's a struggle, you know? And I was just taking, typing natural, thinking even how the post office department, since its inception, uh, it was a man on a horse and he was going the wrong way because really, going the opposite way on, on the insignias because on the patch. And now they changed it last year to Eagle. Praise God. And how the, it's really the first class mail that the people wait for and long for the, to, to read those epistles from their loved ones and checks and whatnot. It's that first class letter carrier that the people look for. The others, are, because they're over in the background, the mailmen, the clerks and the mail handlers and whatnot, nobody knows them. Just that letter carrier. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's one, see? So you don't understand all these things, but God knows what he's doing. Amen. So you just keep walking. Praise the Lord. So you pray for me that I'll be able to go through this little 30-day a 30, a 30 trial with the route, overcome. Amen. Amen. And we'll overcome. We know that that third stage, which I want to speak about this morning, is a mighty climb uphill on the way, on, on the highway, rather. But there's only one door to the highway, and that is the door at Calvary. Amen. And we have to stoop way, way down to go through that door, to get on to the highway. Galatians 2.20. Praise our God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, 
but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 2 Corinthians 4, the seventh verse. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. May the Lord a blessing to the reading of his word. We um, like to title this thought, uh, Harvest in the Spirit. Um, excuse me. What is the consummation of discipleship in this life? What are we looking for? What is our goal? What are we um, endeavoring? I don't like to say striving, because striving sounds like you're fighting for something, see? And we don't have to fight for this. It's freely given. Just accept it. But we endeavor, see? Um, what is the consummation? What are we moving out to? Now let's remember that Jesus is our pattern. St. John, the 10th chapter, says this, to paraphrase it, I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. In other words, that it might be to the full, till it overflows, I am come, that they will keep on receiving it until rivers of living water are actually pouring out of them. That is why I am come. The Son of Man came to give his life for a ransom for many. We know by instinct as Christians that this life is symbolized as the cross. And the, uh, this principle is embedded, is woven in the very nature of God. See? In other words, and it, is, and it is this. Self-giving love is the basic law. To give of yourself love. And a type of it in the natural is the lily. It gives out. Just gives out. See? And the flowers, of course, it gives out a fragrance. And then it dies. You see? Now, um, and Satan, in the beginning, uh, God made all of his beings free moral agents to have their own choice. See? And Satan, because uh, he had the same choice, and, instead of, uh, and he wanted self-seeking love. Seeking uh, the... Uh, or the admiration and the respect and the reverence of all the angels to him. He wanted to be like the Most High. So he wanted that adoration. And he turned it around and perverted self-giving to self-seeking. Evil for good. Self-love for selfishness. Force for meekness. War for peace. He just perverted it, see? And, um, but Jesus was our example. He never lived for himself. His life was spent for others. See? That is perfectly eternal life, to live for others. See? Now, uh, when you go to church and you do good things, that's wonderful, see? But when you live your life and do good things to yourself, that's not eternal life. Some people live a life where they don't want nobody outside to touch it. They want to come here, they'll give their tithes and, and they'll give an offering to a, a poor, needy person. But when they go home, they don't want no nothing to come and break up their way of living. If they want to go to bed at a certain time, they want to go to bed then. If they want to wash their clothes or cook or so, they don't want nothing to interfere with their selfish way of living. 
But that is not the way of a Christian. No matter what we do, uh, or cause what our means and so forth. Because eternal life is living for others. Not for yourself, see. We must live for others. And uh, you take Christ's place as sons of God and live for others. You live for the person that hates you. You live for the person that resents you. You live for the person that is jealous of you. You live for the person that wants to maim you. That's right. Well, I'm getting a no amen this morning here. <laughs> Jesus Christ did. Amen. He died on the cross for murderers, amen. for haters, for the spies of those that are good, for adulterers, for wicked sinners. He died for those who hated him. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. See? So therefore, Jesus did it at Calvary. He died for those who hated him. We sacrifice ourselves to his service to follow him. See? We don't do this for because we're in the line of duty or because you ought to do it or if the thing is right before you and you know what you're supposed to do, you don't do it. Then get a second thought, well, I should do that because after all, a Christian would do that. I'm in the message and Brother Brown, he's taught that we should do this and we shouldn't do that. See, well, that's not... Uh, what I'm talking about, see? What I'm talking about, that's only selfish, you see? What I'm talking about is just a, a, a normal uh, daily action Amen. that's just automatically, unconsciously coming out of you, Amen. see? It's like the sheep just giving wool, just a normal thing. Amen. Like he said these uh, sheep type people would be doing, see? Just like the sheep, they were so surprised, when did we do that? See, when did we do it? It was a normal thing, see? Turn it on. Oh. See me now? So therefore, it was automatically, unconsciously, see, out of love, see? Just his life lived in the people. Not a second thought, see? Not some great uh, a Pentecostal emotion or great ministry, see? Or powers and gifts and signs and wonders. No, sir. It's just that self-sacrifice life that God lives in you automatically doing that which is right just because it is right see just going on don't even think about it it happens praise the Lord right in there amen. see the video where are you at you're on the highway amen, amen. amen. and God has sent a message amen. of faith and deliverance Hallelujah. to cleanse, pour out through the preaching of the word of God. Yes. Every spirit, every thought, every idea that would hinder the saints of God from living normally. See, the word comes to show these things up. Amen. And then the saints of God, by revelation, see what they are, how they're supposed to live. Amen. And then the principles of the Sermon on the Mount, can, life can flow through them. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're on the highway. Amen. Only the broken ones, in, uh, broken and contrite in spirit, broken down completely by the Lord. And the most beautiful thing is to see a God break a man down. Amen. From a great big strong something of flesh, Amen. break him down in his spirit, Amen. break him down in his flesh, Amen. break him down in his heart, Amen. break him down in his soul. Until he's molded in there. And we saw such a man. The prophet of God. Amen. And I like what Brother Hunt said. Now sisters, don't think that you're going to find Brother Branham. Because for a husband. Be thankful for what God has given you. Amen. Praise the Lord. But nevertheless, <laughs> we, it's the broken ones. You see that enter onto the highway. And this highway we were speaking about about three weeks ago is the way of holiness. And off to the side is darkness. And, and, and Satan stands on the side of the highway with many voices whispering to you as you walk along the highway. Just trying to pull you off the, high, the king's highway with a voice, a wrong voice. It may come through legalism or any kind of thing of the world, trying to pull you over to the side and fall down into quicksand. But if you do slip off, and we have, 
every day, you quickly come back to the Lord Amen. and get back up on the highway. Amen. Amen. See? Amen. So the cross is the only entrance to the highway. And we must stoop way down, way down low to get on the highway. To be broken means to be not I, a stiff neck, but Christ who liveth in me. And we must be broken time after time. What's he going to say this morning? You must be broken this morning. <clears throat> What's he going to say tonight? You must be broken tonight. Amen. Broken Wednesday. Broken Sunday morning. Broken Sunday night. Amen. Then with that attitude, Lord, break me Sunday morning. Break me Sunday night. Break me Wednesday night. Amen. And you see some broken ones who are not afraid to back up from the word of God or won't be resenting the things you're saying, see? We must be broken time after time. It will be a constant choice before us. God brings his pressure to bear. If you want a scripture, 1 Peter 1.6, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, if need be. Amen. Amen. Well, who has the authority over the need be? He has. Amen. So if a, a manifold temptation comes, it's needs be. The pressure comes. Amen. And we're in pressure all day long. Amen. Is that right? We wake up in pressure. Amen. See? But we can let it out in the word, Christ. Amen. Only as when the pressure comes, there's no way out now. And if we get into the word, whew, let off the pressure. Well, this is the right thing to do. Then you feel satisfied. Otherwise, you try to figure it out, strive it and trying to figure the thing out. And you will explode like that, see? So, therefore, God brings his pressure to bear on us that we must make the choice ourselves. If someone hurts us or slights us, we immediately have the choice of accepting this slight or hurt, yeah. see, as a means of grace to humble us. Amen. Amen. We got the choice. Didn't shake my hand. Spoke mean to me. This happened. Slighted me. Didn't bring me over to the house for dinner. I didn't go to the picnic because nobody called me. Called everybody else because I was slighted. All kind of things. Little daily things, insignificant things that we think, but God sends them. <laughs> to humble us lower, or we can resist it and stiffen our necks. See? And get all round up, and our spirit get worked up. Why? Why? Over and over. Just keep saying the same old thing. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Because God says it needs be. That's why. So when somebody comes like that to me, I just, well, praise the Lord, and I'll stay there about five minutes, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm getting out of there. Because they refuse time after time after time to accept the will of God. And what in the world can I do if somebody don't want to accept the will of God? Can't do nothing. But if they're willing to humble themselves, and that stiff neck is broken like that. Then you can minister Amen. the word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, only then. That's why I stay away. Right. Way back in 65, the Holy Spirit told me, stay away. Preach the word. That's it. Amen. Pray for the sick. Amen. Do what you can on the word only. Amen. If they come in the back, give them the word. That's, it. That's all. Mm -hmm. Keep walking. That's all I try to do. Amen. Amen. Brother Perez, he appreciated it. Amen. Ask him sometime to tell you that the word, the only, he told the only thing that held him was the message. Amen. He said life flowed into him. I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Amen. What is life, Brother Coleman? The word Amen. is life. Right. See? But people get riled up over little old insignificant things, refuse to let the Lord change their daily living, turn it around a little bit. 
We all do. Amen. See? Nobody has attained here, I don't believe. <laughs> Throw the first stone. Right. So don't be nervous. I'm not saying that I have attained like that. Uh-uh. I'm fighting every day, brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. All through the day, our brokenness will be tested. Now, we can't pretend before the Lord when a brother comes to test you or a sister. We can't say hallelujah. The Lord knows your attitude. You can't say, yes, yes, I'm trying to push him out the door. You know what I mean now? I wish, I wish he would get out of here. Yes, uh, praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord, sister. Bam, close the door after they're gone. God sees all of that. Amen. Amen. See? Praise our God. We can't pretend. Amen. And God nearly always tests us with other people. How? They demand from you. That's how. You worry. You're tired. As Brother Gallagher said one time, Lord, I couldn't do it because I was tired that day. That ain't going to help it. Uh-uh. He allows them to come when you are tired. And they stiff neck demand, demand your life. You didn't do this in nagging and carrying on. And here you're about to shake and explode. You're so nervous. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Somebody come, ring your bell, you ain't ready for nothing, and praise the Lord, here I am. <laughs> ready for dinner or something. You haven't had even, uh, because call you on the phone or nothing. I told you anything. Here I am. And now you're ready to go to pieces. Because they're there. Your fellowship is torn up. You know it. Amen. Amen. He sends them. Allows them to come with their demands. Now, if you find yourself in a patch of unbrokenness when these demands come, go back to Calvary and, and say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Break me down, Lord, today. I, I didn't mean to be that way, Lord. Amen. Though you went through it, though you just got through by the skin of your teeth and they were blessed and you had a nice meal or whatever it is, when they go out the door, you better go to Calvary. Amen. 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 That's right. See, we, you know, the Lord's waiting. He knows. He knows his flesh here. And at Calvary, what do you see? You see a picture of Jesus Christ continually broken for you and me. Amen. Didn't have to do it. But he did. Took up his cross daily for us. Overcome daily for us. Then when you go to Calvary, you see what he did for you. You say, Lord, break me down. I'm nothing. And he will. And he'll send it. Look at Brother Brown. Look at Paul. Look at all the different the, uh, people of God. The trials come constantly coming. Demons and devils just constantly coming. Brother Brandon walked over in the other world. He knew those spirits. They, they talked to him. Saw them. Good thing we don't see them. We think it, it's that person. That person, you're a devil. It's a devil on them. Some cases in them. You don't know which is which, so you better pray. Amen? Amen. Just like the, the old uh, Pentecostal way, a uh, sister here from Assembly of God uh, called me up through a sister that came here, a paycock or something like that, and the back here, they came here once with her husband. She's over New Jersey. I think I spoke about it about two weeks ago. She was all messed up about a daughter and whatnot. I prayed, and her own pastor told her, the devil's got your daughter. That's the old Pentecost where the devil is, the devil at. But a prophet came along and explained why. There's your message. Pentecost is the devil. You said, yeah, it's the devil. Devil made me do this here. Devil made me do this here. But the prophet come along and expose these devils by the word of God. And so I exposed uh, the spirit upon her daughter and explained it to her. And she got a great peace. She slept all night. Now, she's calling me back. She won't talk to my wife. She wants to speak to Pastor Coleman. <laughs> I'm not her pastor. She wants a private ministry now. And she won't talk to Sister Coleman at all. And try to even uh, disguise herself. So my wife won't know. But I was in prayer last night, thank God. 
She don't got the word. And if I was to give her the message, you see? But people want a, a, a private, something private, you know. See me now? So now, uh, we come back to Calvary, and we have to be broken in repentance and confession. And then God comes down by the Holy Spirit and looks into our hearts to see if we have confessed that sin. And in the moment we confess it, he has a pitcher of the water of life, and he pours it into, into your hearts. And while you're there repenting and crying and confessing, something fills you up. It's the water of life. And you feel wonderful. And you get up and there and you love everybody. You feel like a fool for what you said or what you did. Amen. Then you see the brother or the sister, here you go. Amen. Kissing, hugging, and carrying on. Amen? Amen. See what I mean? He pours this picture, but only if you have confessed now. If you just say, I'm sorry, brother, you're still dry. See what I mean now? But a real broken confession fills up the heart. Amen. Praise God. And we go on our way praising God and rejoicing. And overflowing with his new life. See, this is revival. Then you're being revived by the word day by day. Amen. And the others who are the thrill seekers, because I call them, those who are seeking after some great emotional experience and waiting for it, are missing the life being poured out day by day. Amen. And they're doing it now in the message. Gathering out in great places, waiting for a great supernatural manifestation of something that they know nothing about. And Brother Brad said that God would come such a humble way, Amen. would come with a pitcher of water of life and walk in and ask you to put out your cup. Is that right? Amen. And those who come out of Laodicea and put out their cups and say they are needy. Amen. Others say, my cup is filled already. I'm rich and so forth and so on. But those who say they're not filled and have a need, he pours into their cup. And anoints their eyes to see it's him. Praise the Lord. This is revival. Filled with the word. Loving others. Concerned for others' welfare. And for others' salvation. See? No struggling. No tearing. No striving. No getting upset. Just simply giving him each sin to cleanse. In his precious blood. See? And accepting from him the free gift of his love. Of his fullness. Excuse me. People are wondering today, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? A message of faith and deliverance come. God knew in the Laodicean church, he said in the letter to this church age, we are blind, wretched, miserable, poor, and naked, and don't know it. But as many as I love, only those do I rebuke and chasten. Amen. Only the ones who I love. Amen. The rest of them, they ain't going to receive it. See? So then uh, 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 it takes the word to come to give us faith. And when the word gives us faith, and we take the word and confess our sins, and he pours life into us, then the principles of daily living can flow into us. Then we're allowing him to do the work in us. Now Watch. Trying to bring out a point this morning. I'm just taking my time, see. The Son of Man is and has been doing a hidden work. Those who have the cups out, he's been filling it daily. But it's unspectacular. It's not the, the flesh want to see something. It's just daily living. That's all it is. Just going along, see. And he's working with them in the evening time. See? And they are willing to let him fill up their cups and walk with him. And those who are, their cups are running over right now this morning. Amen. They're living like sheep. They're doing things in here, natural things. That's exactly why some get mad about these little things that uh, the Lord allows to have in here among the sisters and so forth and the brothers. Little birthday things and so forth. Like I said, those are just, don't worry about it. Don't have no ideas about it. Many in here right now this morning have ideas about those things. You don't even know what you're even talking about. You shouldn't do that. 
Because God knows he's only trying to let you live normal. Amen. Amen. Prophet told you, you want a wife? Get married, have your children, plant your potatoes, Amen. buy your home, live normal. Amen. You want to, I, I can prove to I have the tapes to prove to you that the prophet gave birthday gifts. I can prove it to you, I don't have to. But if you believe it, Amen. and what are you getting all excited about? Or you give a gift for this one, but you don't give it because, because for that one. I know all those spirits in here. You should be washed from that. Shame on you. Praise God. It's a Christian life. See? Walking along the, the highway to heaven with the hearts overflowing. Bowing the neck. Bowing over. Walking with him all the time. Constantly trusting the blood. The blood is in the word. And when the bloody word is preached and we receive it in repentance and confession, then we are cleansed. Amen. There is no other way. Oh, they can't get that. The not, it is something. There is no other way. Constantly trusting the blood. But this ha trust the blood. Confess it. By faith believe it. Hallelujah. The life I live, I live by the faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Just because he said it so. Amen. I'm, that's how I'm living today, me as a preacher, a minister here. I'm living by faith. I haven't prayed enough. I haven't read the word of God enough. I haven't heard the tapes enough. But the life that I'm standing up here is by faith in the Amen. Son of God. Hallelujah. I haven't done nothing this week. I can't. All kind of demands and everything else has been because just pouring in here. What can I do? Just keep walking, that's all. Amen. See? Amen. It's, uh, it's constant. There's nothing spectacular about this in the, uh, the carnal mind or the uh, carnal sight, rather. These past eight years, see? No uh, great emotional experiences to seek after. And wait for her. no great ministries and great excitement going on, great happenings, because like throughout the week uh, we got a, a revival going and brother so and so's coming in and uh, so forth. We had all that. Yeah. Amen. Some of you got all mixed up. <laughs> Is that right? Amen. The great happenings and so forth. It's not that God ain't in the fire. He in the whirlwind. Amen. He in the earthquake. God is in his word. Amen. The still, small Amen. voice. Amen. The unspectacular Amen. word of God. Amen. Jesus Christ, Amen. the word made flesh, walked to earth. Amen. Humble, simple, no beauty to be desired. And he walked right among them. Then grabbed after him, only one leper come back to fall down. That word walked right among only 11 was left with him. Yeah. How many today know and understand that the same Jesus Christ that walked in the flesh in a body called Jesus came down on the earth again and walked in a prophet called William Brown. Yeah. And that spirit, that Holy Spirit, that pillow fire, that anointing was in the prophet and he gave out a message, a prophetic message, yeah. the word of God. And that message has been preached here by his grace for eight years. Amen. And they've come and gone. I don't even know what it is. That same, in other words, if you can visualize, I pray to God you can. Visualizing or, or, or what is being preached here this morning as Jesus Christ did it himself. That's his word. Amen. Nothing else other than Amen. his word. There is, he, it is him. Amen. He's speaking now. Amen. But you can't get it. Because you want to see the long beard or maybe the, the, the long hair in the robe, maybe. Mm -hmm. But if the word, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Amen. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. <sighs> Receive ye breath. He breathed on him. And got him an expectation. Go to the upper room. But Jesus standing there breathed on him. The same God. That breathe upon them has come in the evening time. Amen. He's come again. Amen. And he's 
breathe upon us Amen. through the prophet. Amen. Seven seals. Amen. Piece of the trumpet. Amen. Token. Amen. You get it? Amen. Question and answer. Amen. The rapture tape. Amen. Receive you the Holy Ghost. His Amen. breath. When we sit down in our homes and hear the tapes, he's breathing on us. Amen. Oh, we don't have to see his beard or his hair or his robe. We see Jesus Christ in the Word of God. Amen. Breathing eternal life on us. And we don't get it. What well, right here? Some in here go out, come back, send to all kinds of things. You, you ain't never seen Jesus. Praise God. What is it, Brother Coleman? Just plain day to day living the life. The Lord intended for each one of us to live. God, before the foundation of the world, intended that I should be here in New York City and have a family. And I should have a son born in 68. Amen. That I should because have a home here, because move over there, just daily going to work. That's all it is. Amen. So many come running. I thought it was so much about New York. Well, ain't nothing happening here. Well, it's not. Just plain, daily living, day by day. The thrill seekers get all shook up and they go out here cursing you. Because they don't see a spectacular going on. And, and it is spectacular. Because it's not I. Hey, it is Christ that lives in me. How in the world can we live in this dirty, low-down city here if it don't be for Christ living in us? Millions times, millions of demons here can't even praise God if it don't be for who? Christ living in you. But you don't see it. What can I tell you? Praise God. No great excitement. This is real holiness. God hidden in simplicity. But you just wait till he manifests himself, though. Oh, watch the third pulled in. But he's here now, living, day by day, day in and day out. Praise God. Many come here and are confused. They expect us to be running up and down Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday, going back and forth between one another's homes and prayer meetings going on, and brother songs are coming in. It's not out here in New York. And they come in, I don't know what, well, they come in Sunday morning, now they'll go out of here. There's no service tonight, if I didn't say it. They said, well, what happened? What you'll do the, because of the night? Go back home, go home, eat your dinner, sit out here, tape, read the Bible, or pray. Amen. So, Amen. what can I tell you? Amen. But then, what's Brother Coleman? Can I see him or Brother Hunt? No, I, I'm dead. I'm trying to do the same thing myself. Amen. I have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go to work. Oh, because 4 this morning, and 4 yesterday morning, and 4 next morning. I'm dead. But it's not I, it's Christ living in me, Amen. moving me on. Give me strength, comfort to keep me day by day. Praise our God. Amen. I want you to do something in New York. Do what? We can't do anything. He does it. Amen. Some expect to see Brother Hunt and I every night on the telephone or come to our house and sit down and talk. It ain't talking, it's living. Amen. Kind of talk. We talk to people for years and they still don't know what we're talking about. It's a revelation between you and Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, talking? Amen. Pastor Coleman, she want me to talk. But I'm tired of talking. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If a sister wants to bypass my wife and talk to me, because, oh, you understand, Brother Coleman, I know right away when she ins insults or ignores my wife to get around her some kind of way, what kind of spirits up on her? Yeah. So I use my wife to test it. When I see it, don't come there, brother, I'm gone. Amen? Amen. Absolutely right. If my wife, who's her sister in Christ, she don't want her fellowship, she don't want mine. Because I ain't giving it. I give nothing but the word of God. Nothing but attention seeking. Do something for me, spirit. Look at me, a cute spirit or something. I want to see Jesus. It's only one way. You come to Jesus. I ain't got nothing to give you but Jesus Christ. 
There is only one to come to Christ. So if you come here, you're all shook up and this didn't happen the way you want to happen. I, I, I won't see you in a week. I, I'm going home. I'm trying the best I can to live this life and do what I got to do. That's the great secret of the highway. Now, the great secret of the highway is knowing what to do with sin when sin comes in. You see, people, how are they overcoming like that? They know what to do with sin. They refuse to let the devil take them to Mount Sinai. And they're tormenting them, tormenting You did this here. You said you're going to do that. You didn't do it. There's the devil. Somebody walk up to you and nagging and nagging and nagging. Somebody come in your, home, in your house and spying you out in there. It's the devil. Amen. That's right. Talk against you and everything else. Or looking for sniffing around, looking for dirt or something. And they don't even know that your dirt's under the blood. Come in there sniffing, looking around. Is that right, Brother Kurt? What are they looking for? Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. The Greeks said we would see Jesus. They didn't look for anything else but Jesus. Amen. We would see Jesus. Amen. Nothing else shall suffice us. We would see Jesus. Amen. Praise our God. So the secret is knowing what to do with sin when sin comes in, and it does every moment of the day sin comes in. Amen. Amen. Don't you think that you're going to overcome by yourself? You will not. There's only one way. You've seen this year the Holy Spirit been coming down every week on the same thing. Amen. The secret is always to take that sin to Calvary, not Mount Sinai. Get all shook up and everything. I can't, uh, so forth and so on. If you're trying to do it, brother, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. No, sir, it will not work. Right. Take the secret is to take sin yeah. to the cross. And see there is sinfulness and put it under the blood. Uh, Go to God. Go to the cross, the word. Amen. And the Lord said, that's sin, my daughter. That's sin, my son. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. He said, well, put it under the blood. Confess your sin Amen. and believe in your heart. It's under the blood. Don't take it to the Mount Sinai. You will be condemned all day long. Amen. And when Job's friends get a hold of you, I feel sorry for you. They'll tear you up, Job's friends. Get on the telephone and everything else. See? Amen. Praise God. Everything that comes between us and one another, such as resentment, envy, impatience, impatience jealousy, it comes between you and I, it comes between you and God. Because God's in me. Amen. See? The comes between you and I is between you and God. Love ye one another. John cried out, love ye one another. Amen. When he was leaving here. Little children. Is that right? Amen. For God is in you. Now these barriers, and they are here, are sometimes no more than little veils. You can see through a veil, can't you? Is that right? You can still see a little, there's a little blurred, but you can see through it. But if you don't remove it immediately, the sin, unbelief, whatever it is, resentment, jealousy, and so forth, it thickens into a blanket. If you don't get it back then, a brick wall comes up. See? And then you shut off from, from fellowship with God and your brother and sister. And then you see people shut into themselves, trying to do it themselves. Trying to do it themselves. You got to let go, let God. Amen. Now, the, the effect of these sins into us is to make us walk in darkness. Cover up and hide what we really are. See? And what we're really feeling. See? And that is the meaning of darkness. Somebody walk up to you and know they are jealous or resentful. That's darkness. But they say, praise the Lord, they're hiding, impersonating. It's not real. And brother, you know it deep down into their souls and they know that you know it. And look at you anyway. I love you. They know they're lying. They know it. And they know that you know they're lying. And, but most of all, he knows it. Amen. So darkness hides sin. And light, like this morning, reveals sin. Amen. Now how many are willing to come to the light? See? Otherwise we're just pretending for the past eight years 
wearing a mask. See? This is a highway life. This life is quite unspectacular. No new doctrine. People looking for new doctrine. Eve was too. It's the word, say Jesus Christ. He come into us the former rain, come back as the latter rain, the former rain together. Same Jesus. It's just a life to live day by day. Listen, in whatever circumstances the Lord has put us. Amen. And if God did not put you in New York City, you will never be happy in New York City. Because God put all of us here. It's in our nature. And they come in and curse us. A brother come up in the pulpit at one time and said, this is the stinkiness. This is the most ungodly and all kind of things he said right here on Wednesday night. Because you know him, you know. He curses here. But we're God's people. Praise God. See, there's nothing spectacular going on, see. No great happenings all during the week and great things going on, see. See, you'll be miserable here if you're looking for that. See? And um, many even curse New York and curse the pastors and the people here and everything, see? Say ain't nothing here. I don't see nothing. Telling me something about what's going on in New York. I don't see nothing. See? They say it all the time. You know that. See? It is not I, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Amen. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave his life for me, himself. Now we here in New York, we tired, weary, as Paul said here, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. No. Amen. 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 Other words, he said, are we hard pressed, but are we not suffocated? Amen. 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 He's talking here about a wrestling match here, you know. That's right. We are perplexed, but not in despair. In other words, we are puzzled, but not utterly baffled. The devil get a certain lock on your arm because of a wrestling match. You're kind of trying to figure it out. But you're not in, because in despair or baffled. You just wait and fool around a little bit and unlock it. Amen. 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 Praise God, for he is in you. Greater is he is in you than he's in the world. He can't baffle us. He can't perplex us. The world, St. Luke 24 said, with perplexity, men's hearts fail for fear, not us. Amen. We may be a little baffled a little bit for a season, but we got a message, brother. Amen. Amen. We got a message. Amen. A white horse rider went for with a message. Amen. And if we all baffle, all perplexed, just come to the word. Amen. And there under the sweetness, we bathe down in the Holy Ghost. He said, oh, that's what that meant last year. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're also in a foot race here. He says here, pursued, but not caught or outrun. Amen. That's right. Amen. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Amen. A persecutor, run there if you're persecuting you. Amen. It's a foot race. And the old song, I beat the devil running, I'm so glad. <laughs> that right? Amen. We're beating them running. We're running straight, brother, we're running straight into the resurrection. Amen. And we want to get there before him because he fell before he got there. Judas. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're in a prize fight. Cast down but not destroyed. Struck down. Amen. But yet not out of the fight. Joe Fraser knocked down Cassius Clay. Got right up. Get up from the floor the devil knock you down with a punch. You're laying down there for. Amen. You've been conditioned. You had road work and so forth. Amen. You've been taking the punches in the gym. Well, get up. Lay on and wall around in there in self pity. Amen. The devil did this here. The devil did this here. I'm so. He'll, Brother Bram told you that he's got a whack at you. He's got a good shot at you. Keep it covered. Feign it, move, see. Do some footwork if you have to. Amen. Amen. Jab him, stick him, poke him, keep moving. As the man said, the sting like a bee and float like a butterfly. Praise God. Struck down, amen, but not out of the fight. See, sometimes you have to bring a natural illustration for people to see that. Amen? Praise the Lord. See, 
always bearing about the dying of the Lord in the body, in closing. The principle of the cross, friends, is in the very nature of God. Self-giving love, self-sacrificing. There was at the cross, there was the cross at the dawn of history when the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. When it started off, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. There was the cross. There was the cross when he who was rich became poor for us. That was the cross. There was the cross at the manger, another cross. When he left his earthly home, he had nowhere to lay his head. The foxes have holes and the birds have nests. The Son of Man have not where to lay his head. That was a cross. Three and a half year ministry, a cross. Mount uh, Temptation, another cross. Up on and the supreme cross, of course, was when he gave his life because for us. All was the way of the cross and the mystery of that way and the secret revealed to the elected ones is both Alpha and Omega of the disciples' way. Jesus, our beginning and our end. And there's your secret. Don't look for anything else other than Jesus. See? Now in closing, the way of the cross has three aspects. As sinners, number one, we see and receive Christ crucified as our substitute. Another went to the cross for us to be an effigy for us. And he stood in our stead and died for us. That we might have forgiveness of sins, excuse me, justification, regeneration, and cleansing from guilt. He took our place. That's one aspect of the cross. And many have stayed right there. They never left there. They're just right there, just praising God for that. There's a second aspect. Many of you know that way. It is clearly laid out in the scriptures and realized in the experience of all who go on with God. See? In St. Matthew 16, 24, uh, you can read it. The reason on this wise, 16, 24, um, speaking here to Peter, uh, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. When Christ had told Peter because he had to suffer, the Son of Man had to suffer, the flesh of Peter didn't want no suffering. No, what, what is he going to suffer for when his Messiah was there, his king was there, and he was the Lord of all, and all he had to do was to live right there in Israel, and they had everything he wanted. And he's talking about suffering. He didn't want no suffering, the flesh, you see. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but, that, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. He said three things here. If any man will come after, that's coming to the cross. Let him deny himself. That's this aspect right here, number two. Deny yourself. And then all those who will go on with God, they, have to, they realize that they have to deny themselves. And this church here and people in this message have been denying themselves these past eight years. Being identified with Christ on the cross. Now, we couldn't be identified with, cross, with Christ on the cross in an actual uh, overcoming experience back in 1906 because he hadn't sent the word yet. We could just by faith and, and, and because like, because like praying and having wonderful meetings and so forth and, and the gifts and so forth and try to overcome daily. But in 1963, he sent the way how to do it, a message. So then we saw it, and our eyes are knowing it, and we come to the cross, and there we are on the cross. This is the second aspect, and here we deny ourselves, and that's what's going on right now. And then the third phase is uh, let him take up his cross and follow me. Now, we're all talking about ministries and whatnot, but we got to come through this here first. Denying ourselves. See? So therefore, it's clearly laid out here. It is commonly called identification with Christ's cross. It's the Malachi 4 message. The Christian sees that he has come to the cross, but is himself, not only that, that he's come to the cross, but he himself is on the cross. See? For if Christ died in my place, then God sees me there. In the sight of God, I'm on the cross. See? And Paul summed it up. By saying, uh, I am crucified with Christ. That's what he meant. See? 
Now, when to knowledge, through the seven seals, is added eager appropriation, adding to your faith, see, going on because like now, then the dying of the old man, see, and the rising of the new man in Christ becomes a permanent inward experience, like now, see, to the soul, and it conforms the outside body to Christ's way of life. And it's so natural and humble and simple, and they, 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 they don't know what's going on, see? And this is also called applying the token. There's another because term for it. It's the turning of the wheat from a green to a golden brown. It's the eagle, baby eagle waiting up high up on the cliff as mother feeds him. And he, and, and he waits about five years old, and it's time for him to seek a mate and time for him to go off and fly on his own. It's all of these things. Waiting on the Lord, but denying himself, waiting on God. It is simple daily living, day to day, in circumstances precious of God's choosing. See? Or is what has transpired here in New York City? It's been God's choosing. It's too simple. It's too humble. People don't see nothing going on. All that God wanted us to do is to do what you're doing now. Amen. Believe him, that's all. Amen. See? Now the third aspect of the cross, when you pick it up and you fall after him, but he got to tell you to do that. Yeah. He, I mean, I don't know if anybody outside of William Brandon, the prophet, sent him out. Seven angels. Go back to Justinville, Indiana. All right? Amen. Back he comes. And took up his cross, and God said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. Praise God. Now the third aspect, the third and final stage, in this upward rugged climb to the summit, only a few elected ones, Christ's very brethren, take this vigorous ascent up the mountain. Many fall off, weary, tired. I'm going to speak plain this morning. Many are tired, weary, or there are some voices call them off of the highway and they fell off into a swamp over there in another glare somewhere and, and, and so forth, and they don't know what's going on. But there are a few chosen ones that's walking the highway. They have a secret. They know that, that, that they are na by nature they are sinners, so therefore they don't get all upset. Amen. They know that whatever is flesh is flesh, Amen. and what is spirit is spirit. They know that they cannot make this flesh over. Can't do it. And the others are struggling and trying to make the flesh over. I am good, you are not good. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. But the ones with a revelation, they recognize there's nothing good in me, but it's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And they are the overcomers by the blood. Only the elected ones after they have denied themselves these past eight years or so, try to die out to every thought, every idea, and let life come into them. There's an elected few who are ready now to say, come, in God's sight. They're ripened. They are mature. When the little babies come jigging and jagging with resentment and anger and jealousy, they don't get mad. They pray for them. They sidestep it and keep moving. See? Praise the Lord. It is the way of the cross, listen, for others, or what we would say, world redemption. It is the law of the spiritual harvest. I'm going to say something. I'm going to finish off right here, just about an hour. The first two aspects, coming to the cross for salvation and going on the cross to partake of Christ's passion for ourselves, like we're doing now, we are partaking for ourselves. The second aspect here, see? But the third... That's when you're completely dead, and you are just dead, and it's for the others. The third is for others. See? We all know we're pushing the third pole. We're in it. We all know that what will come forth out of it will be God in flesh. We all know that. We've been told that. On the tapes and everything, we, that is, that's the message. Supremely, it was seen in Jesus Christ. For others, he went forth from his baptism and his anointing to walk this way for others. For others, he died daily to, to his loved ones. 
his home, his normal enjoyments, he died daily for what? For others. For others, he laid down his life. For himself? No, for others. And he did this to fulfill the law of the spiritual harvest. Now watch. It was a necess necessity. In closing, here's why. Adam and Eve, fallen man, had died in the spirit of God. Is that right? They were made in God's image and his likeness Amen. with the Holy Spirit. And when they received the, uh, uh, because of the unbelief come in and they sinned, they died in the spirit. The Holy Spirit left, see? And their natural spirit was there, of course, see? And they died in the spirit of God and the kingdom of heaven and come alive in the flesh to Satan in the kingdom of hell. Think on it. And there they were. And in type, there had to be a sacrifice and an atonement for them, which was the lamb. And for us today, there had to be a savior and a pioneer had to be found, and that was Jesus Christ. He was the one, the captain of, of our salvation, who could and would die, listen, to the kingdom of hell as fallen man substitute and rise again to the kingdom of heaven for fallen man. See? And thus become what? The seed corn, which by its death produces the 100 fold of life giving. See? This 100 fold of life giving substance, not for itself but for those who feed on it. This is the rough part here. Just don't get it. With this joy set before him, I'm preaching anyway, the joy of the harvest, because we're approaching it now and you've got to know it. The joy of a mother who travails, not for herself, for that little bundle of life. The joy of the bride who travails these past eight years, Worry and trouble and persecution and whatnot. Not for herself, to bring forth Jesus. Amen. Is that right? Amen. That Jesus will be the seed corn that others will feed on Jesus in the bride. Right. Not for herself. Because when she met Jesus back in 63, she knew she had eternal life. Amen. Amen. She knew it, see? Her sins was forgiven. She knew that but that she realized that she was a body and he was the head. So therefore, she realized that she would have to say, come, there's millions, times, millions around the world are waiting and hungry right now for that bride to come forth. And she will come forth. Yes, sir. There's only gonna be a few. See. The joy of the harvest, the mother who tra tra uh, travails, the bride likewise, for the joy he endured the cross, and despise the shame that goes with it. How many we've had to stand here, say, come over here, that ain't, because you don't have it there, see, it's a cross, and they don't understand it. But we endure that, despise the shame that goes along with it. See, I don't see no shame in it, but, because some think so. Some think we are ridiculous. Stand up here, what are you doing? You ain't doing nothing. Why don't you go over here, or, or, or do this here, you ain't got a great ministry, and so forth and so on, see. But um, in his footsteps followed the first members of the church. That's right. They saw the full stature of Christian living to consist of merely of not giving or enjoying his passion, but giving out to others. Mm -hmm. And there went the early church members. And that was the, in the book of Acts. So then death worketh in us, but life in others. Praise God. The early church, Paul, Timothy, Irenaeus, Polycarp, Luther, Wesley, right on down to our time, and supremely again, and William Branham. And, one, and all you heard the story, when uh, he was standing out there by the a campfire, and Billy Paul asked him that he should pray for himself, he says, Paul, it's not for me. It's for others. That's the word. That's what he said. It's not for me, he said. Jesus is not for me. Paul says, it's not for me. It's for you. If we could ever get that mind in here, brother, you see a power of God. He told that to him. That day at Calvary, in closing, page 19, he's speaking here about the doing the greater works. 
Now notice the great works that that's to have the power in the church, not only to heal the sick by prayer, cast out devils by prayer, but to impart eternal life to believers. There is your greater works. The Holy Ghost is coming and given into the hands of the church to impart life. That's what Calvary meant. It took stooped, degraded men and women and lifted them into the place to be sons and daughters of God, to heal the sick, to impart eternal life by giving the Holy Ghost to obedient believers, men who were once unbelievers, be made believers and impart spiritual, eternal life. Poor, blind, wretched people, how do you miss that? Don't you see what the greater thing is? That's the greatest thing that could ever happen was to impart eternal life to the people. What is eternal life? The life that he lived. The life that was in him, impart that to others. Can a man do that? A son of God can. Now do you understand. Now do you see what has been transpiring in a local Christian Sunday for nine years. Giving out the greatest thing ever, eternal life. By the word of God, I am come through Malachi 4 that you might have life in more abundantly. I'll open a place in New York City. I'll give it the revelation to pour out life more abundantly. And many will come against it. And many will talk against it. They don't know that eternal life is being imparted. The greater thing, greater than healing of the body, Greater than signs and wonders. Amen. Greater than all these things Amen. is eternal life. Amen. And they sit right in here and don't even know what's going on. What can I tell you this morning? Praise God. Brother Perez knows all about it. You ask him. He'll tell you what it is. The original corn of wheat came back again in William Branham to die out in the prophet's flesh. The prophet died out. Christ was in his flesh. And by his death, William Branham's spiritual death in the flesh, he produced 100-fold, a corn of wheat. That corn of wheat was prepared every, uh, because Colonel Burr was just right, and in 1966, it was ready. Corn of wheat. Amen. And then we saw it, and then we uh, want to go on with God, so we went to the cross to deny ourselves. 65, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70, 71, denying ourselves. But if you want to follow me, take up your cross and come after me. <coughs> Only a few do that. The elected ones in the beginning, the early church, they did it. Arrhenius and Polycarp and Paul and Timothy and Barnabas and so forth. And William Bram down here in the last days, he did it. But with those, God <coughs> walks with them. And they're dying. They have to receive the insults, the resentment, the jealousy. The people, the demons coming and so forth, they, but they're dying. When love projects for these people bound by the devil, grace takes over for them. Amen. Brother Perez tell you about it. When love, Jesus Christ, the word, the message, by spiritual revelation, you see it and you die to your flesh. And the person and people come against you, all ideas and this, you're wrong, you say, you did this wrong and that wrong, and you say, yes, brother, you humble yourself, and grace takes over for them. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. That's right. It'll be worse for a millstone to be hung around your neck to say anything against the least of mine, to do anything because against them. But they recognize, they want to give out eternal life. So they die to themselves. They won't fight against you that you might be saved. So when you come with your accusations and your mean sayings and so forth, the real seed of God will die in the flesh and die a spiritual death like the early church did. Stephen did, stood there. He died. Is that right? You stiff neck and uncircumcised in the heart and there the glory of God came upon him? And they saw that countenance of God and they bit him. They were so jealous. You wait. It's going to happen all over again. Yeah. The
The prophet said the bride will be repudiated. She's even feeling the pangs of it has been feeling the past eight years. That's right. Friends, you don't do these things because uh, um, there's a spirit here in America to go out to the islands, Tr Trinidad and Africa, poor little brown and black people. They feel so wonderful to because give them something. And for the little black ones, I feel so good when I do something for them, or little brown ones or yellow ones and so forth. That ain't nothing but a hypocrite. Do it because Jesus Christ is in you, living a life. Not because you feel good doing for little black ones and yellow ones and so forth. Do it because Christ, Jesus Christ is in you. You ought to hear some of these ministers talking when they go down there to Trinidad. Think those, those people because are fools down there. The brothers come and tell Brother Hunt and I in Jamaica and places like that. And he, they're going down there all puffed up. I swear they're doing some, tell them how they're supposed to sing and tell them what they're supposed to do and so forth. Now the prophet said you got to do this here, this way and this way. Oh, and the people just humble, they don't say nothing, see? But we got a line into them. Praise God. See what I mean? That's a spirit in America here. I'm telling you, absolutely is an unclean spirit. A puffed up, uh, se uh, uh, selfish spirit. It's what it is. You might as well know what, can know what it is. When you do something, don't do it. Some people feel good if they could do something for the, uh, the underprivileged. The rich man, that's what he feels. Self-righteous spirit. Here he comes down into Harlem and different places once a year because he has a, a banquet or a ball or something like that and give the uh, proceeds and so forth. He feels wonderful. He feels washed and cleansed. I did something for the poor, needy, underprivileged. A Christian does it because he's got a Christ in him. Amen. No matter what they look like or who they are. Amen. That's right. Love the unlovely. That's right. The crippled, old, messed up ones, love them. How many of them are going to go to them? See? The greater works impart eternal life. And then through the preaching of the word, hearing of the tapes and so forth, and then the Christian man or woman himself dying out to their own desires, dying out to their own over lust, over desires, see? And uh, uh, um, this dying out that the others might see Jesus Christ. It's very humble. Many have come and testified that they see a what? A life. That's all it's supposed to be. But that is too humble. That is too simple. A life walked the earth in the flesh, Jesus. And they saw it, but they wouldn't join to it. Because it, uh, it was nothing. Same thing today. The preaching of the word is so humble and simple. Just daily living. Circumstances happening. Uh, the, because believe God and whatever it is. Because God heal you or whatever it is. That, that's just simple. Ain't nobody getting any glory out of that. No great ministries and so forth. See? Unspectacular, no great emotional experiences. Brother Cohen and Brother Hunt having a, a, a great meeting and everybody's coming up and the uh, angel of the Lord is flying down through here and so forth. Come on up, brother, send out telegrams and so forth. Spectacular. No rebuking, correction, instruction Amen. in the ways of righteousness. Amen. That and casting out devils every time the word is preached. Spirits up on people that the principle of the kingdom of God might flow. And now the others come and they feel a life, something strange. The women, the sisters look right, and the brothers look right. It's a life. That's all it is. But I, I didn't, you don't have to. Just live a life. That's all. Just plain, everyday living, day to day. That's all it is. Just doing right. Being kind. As your heavenly Father is kind. He gives the sun to the good and the evil. And the rain to the just and the unjust. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. And you be good to them outside also, mm -hmm. as your father, see? Now, praise God, we're going to close out denying ourselves. I have one, one thing else here to say. Now, uh, dying out to these normal advantages in the flesh, comforts, loved ones, material, because advantages, enlarge income and pleasures, and, and because leisure gives me a right to claim and to receive the harvest in the spirit. What is the harvest or the uh, produce or the fruit of the Spirit? There's one fruit of the Spirit. 
And that one fruit is love, peace, joy, temperance, and so forth. When I die out in the flesh, voluntarily, on the cross, then the law of the Spirit, as Christ did, see, the seed of corn, see, then that law is a law. Then I've got to receive, if I die in the flesh, then the life of Christ must be in my mortal body. And then, it, but it's not for me, it's for others. <laughs> Amen. I wanted to get all my ministry, and uh, here I am, so humble, and I cast out devil. No, sir, it's for others. It'll be so humble and simple, it's going on right now, and don't even know it, see? It's the way of the harvest, friends. Do you love them? Amen. Praise God. Well, when, uh, as I was saying one time, that when we have our trials, and tribulations, and so forth, and they come, we can resist it as a gate crasher, as I once said, or welcome it as a friend, these trials, with corresponding destructive or constructive effect. If I don't welcome what God sends, I will I'll destroy myself in frustration and striving and worry and everything else. But if I welcome it, it's for my construction. It is to edify, to build me up. If I welcome this little unwelcome gate crasher, the one that want to come into and change your daily living. How you have it all lined out. You go out of the house, something happens. Bam. Your plans are smashed up right away. The phone rings. This happens or that happens. See? Now, by the practice or the principle of the cross, losses, trials, whether unsought or deliberately chosen, become positive weapons of offense against the devil. See? And it's the only thing. It's what is now when love projects. Grace takes over. And God uses people to, because a shucker's down. You understand that? Amen. Well, the corn of wheat, friends, we all know, is ripe. We see it. The a chaff is ripe also, dried out. We either one or the other. See? And if there is a corn of wheat, then the corn of wheat must fall in the ground of the word of God. Whatever God sends, if you are a corn of wheat, you'll fall into the ground. And what will come up out of the ground will be for others. And we'll humble ourselves and we'll die. Because we want to go into the third stage, as we would say. Just as all one, actually. But this is a time when we've been able, by the grace of God, to see it even and out and see what it is. Amen. Up to this time, we see through a glance darkly. But when the prophet come, he lined it out to us and we saw it. And we see it now. See? And we see what it is coming to the cross, going on the cross, and then picking up your cross and going out for others or world redemption. And I believe that we have come down to that point now. And that's where we are resting now. Do you believe that, friends? Amen. Amen. I believe that the times are so terrible, people are sick, weary, worn out, and yet God has been great in our midst here. Amen. He's been moving right through here Amen. and doing signs to me and wonders why Brother Perez and man had a stroke. My own father had a stroke. And, he, and a prophet on the restoration of the bride tree, he said he was healed, thus saith the Lord. But he has not received it all the way yet. His unbelief. Amen. That's right, my mother knows. She's sick this morning, weary, worn out from his unbelief. He refuses to believe that he's altogether healed. Brother Perez, he accepted his. Amen. And the prophet said, that's thus saith the Lord for my father. Amen. But he ain't never received it yet. He never believed it yet. Unbelief will kill you. Friends, I say to you in the name of the Lord, believe God Amen. and you shall prosper. Amen. Don't try to figure out what is going on here. Amen. You just believe God. See? You just believe him and go on. Don't try to order your life your way. Many people, I'm going to talk to you plain now. People come to the Lord and then they say, well, Lord, I'm going to do this for you. Or I'm going to do that for you. Maybe uh, 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 if it's a brother, he because he won't have a wife or a sister, she don't want a husband or so whatever it is. I mean, you can't. You have to ask, what is God's will in the matter? Amen. Lord, let Thy will be done for my life. While well, we have husband and wives here, and we have single people, and we have because, because young people, old people, and every one of them, they all have a struggle in the trial. So it's not because you're single, or not because you're married. See, it's God. Amen. But the thing you do is to seek God's will for your life. Amen. 
Some uh, got married and found out they wasn't what it was supposed to be in their own minds. That's right. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. And they're having a horrible time now. And the devil will even tell them that their husband now is not the man for them, but he'll get one over there in the many kingdom because she'll get one over there. Well, then she disbelieves the very thing that she believed in the beginning. And she went back on God's word. She believed she loved that man. She wanted that man in spite of all. Where's your faith now? Just because you got a few trials and got shook around a little bit. You don't want to believe for his salvation? Just before the light, it gets very dark. Hold on, sisters. Hold on, brothers, for your wives. Just before the light, Brother Bram told you, darkness moves in, but the morning star comes out to shine. Just before the light. And our Jesus Christ, how he's manifested himself in this assembly here through Brother Perez here, taking the man to the very gates and bringing him back here, showing that he's with you, showing his signs, showing his wonder, showing his mercy. And what do we have to put our heads down for? Jesus Christ is in our midst, imparting eternal life. Amen. Eternal life. The word being given out. Now there will be a, a witness of that. Oh, yeah. But it'll be too late. Receive eternal life now. See, God will give a witness of it. Oh, yeah. It'll show, as he said, great signs and wonders, sure. But, brother, you come in now. Don't wait until then. Amen. Amen. Do you love him? Amen. We walk in the beauty. Yeah.